Morning! Morning. <laughs> I'm putting our wellies on. <laughs> what have you got on? <laughs> what have you got on? <laughs> And welcome to my daily vlog where we are at, in Essex today at Deersbrook Farm. Mark from the HDB, that's what we're doing. What are we doing today then, Mark? So we're having a bit of a meeting with chefs and farmers around beef production and how to get the best out of the product and, uh, and, huh? and how the farming practices influence the uh, beef and product. Have we got any Michelin starred ones? I think there's all sorts, yes. The Michelin star chefs from all walks of life. So um, oh. it's going to be a really interesting day. I hope they're cooking for us. Yeah, they are. Oh, yes. Beef brisket rolls for lunch. Lovely, lovely. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. We'll check that out in a minute. Yep. Yeah. I'm putting our wellies on. <laughs> what have you got on? <laughs> <laughs> what have you got on? <laughs> Let's have a look around the farm and a lot of their cattle. I think they've run a few different systems here of grazing and indoor feeding so we'll uh, we'll touch on that shop a little bit later that's a nice carving that isn't it wow yeah fellow influencers here and marketing specialists <laughs> how are we all doing good yeah good yes yeah and very looking forward to coming on that wow Fantastic. Hopefully, it doesn't set the barn on fire. There's a thatched roof, so liable. There's potential. <laughs> These are all lined up because a little bit later today, we're going to be cooking on here, us guys, on a live stream. So maybe check that out. But look at all the lighting. They've really done and gone to town here in preparing this. Well, Ashley's here as well, but she's wearing a very nice pink hat. <laughs> Ashbrook hat. Very good. <laughs> so we just had a little talk in the barn. Um, everyone's now on the farm walk. We're going to find out about, um, usually when we talk about carcass confirmation, we're looking at it from like a farmer's perspective. Well, we're going to be hearing it from a chef and food service perspective today so um, we'll find out a little bit of information on what chefs actually want rather than what we want as farmers so it's nice to see it from the from the other side but we'll have a listen into this and uh, look around the farm Charlotte's liking it because it's very dry here and we're on pasture for life um, on Anna's farm here so the cattle are grazing all year round so we got some yearlings here that are outgrazed and they're pasture for life so they um, are grazed all year round. This is some of the dry ground that they've got here on the farm and these guys are out. Sussex breed. Nice things. Native breed and because of how we farm regeneratively and um, they are slower growing um, so they are more like 28 months. Um, at time of slaughter, um, whereas on my dad's side, the commercials, they were more like 16 to 18 months, so it's quite a big difference. Um, and then generally, so they're using a lot of clover layers in this permanent pasture to fix nitrogen into it. Um, and you can see it's lovely, isn't it? All this, James is getting photos here. <laughs> really nice. Uh, Nice environment. So what a great place to uh, showcase British beef to uh, our chefs and food service. They're off. <laughs> Look at this. What a cow trailer. That is a beast, isn't it? Hey? That's what it's all about. Horton Park House on a, on a dolly. Nice. Lots of toppers and we've even got some pigs. Little piggies. We'll see some tractors in a minute, guys. Oh, like this, we've got some John Deere's here. Yup. And a Massey for the Massey fans. So what's this, a 465? Boost. A lot of pigs in here. Lots of storage for straw. Wow. 
some of the cows here and calves. Hello, guys. You all right? Got a few um, fairly fit heifers in here. Look at the brisket on that. Yeah. Which is really great uh, for the crucifier. <laughs> so uh, the one is really low, very lean, almost uh, not anorexic, but that sort of way out. It's that sort of thing. And when you start getting across to this 4H, 5H, 5H, um, yeah, <laughs> it's sort of the real fatter end. So you look at me as compared to looking at some other people in this room for this uh, number one end, and that's where it all comes together. So low fat, average, uh, most places are looking at a three stroke 4 L. That's a nice covering, and the way that you can do that and you can judge that on the live animal, uh, particularly when you can get close to them, is actually just feel the ribs. When your fingers just fit into the ribs, uh, you don't feel the bone too well, but you can just move it across and feel that gelatinous movement underneath. That's sort of what you're looking for. Also, when you look at the tail stalk, you've got sort of a, a shape that... Uh, This starts to fill with the tail that comes just through there. This starts to fill with a fat system. If that sort of coming level, just a bit pronounced, that sort of in this three stroke four L system, as soon as we start getting a bit of a bulge, it starts moving towards there. And if it sits recessed, it's coming into this direction. So when it goes through the sorter line and it goes over the scales and there's a, a, a classifier there, the guy who's looking at this, he's taking the weights, he's taking the reading and he's probably got about eight seconds or nine seconds to actually make that call of is it a nice square shape, has it got fat inside it, has it got fat outside it, where we're putting that and then he puts that out onto the grid. This is really important from a chef perspective, from a butcher perspective uh, from the whole way forward in the chain but it's not really utilised enough to actually get that consistency going through the business because what happens is they is say send us a loin, send us a rump, send us a and it just comes pre-cut and the butchers that we've got do a really great job but we just need people to understand how all this sort of fits together and how this can actually bring a consistency for the consumer at the end, because the consumer at the end is the really important person that makes the decision. Look at this beast! That's what we got here. We got a. I can't see the number. It must be like a 155 or something. Oh, I was right. Yeah, 155. Looks like they've got a, a few um, deers in the shed, which is always nice. <laughs> so these guys are doing a live panel session now. So we've got silver side in a bun today. As much as we like. That is good. It won't cost a lot of money, but it will feed the whole family. Mm. Yeah, I think as well. Like, no one's expecting anyone to cook beef wellington. First mm. meal. <laughs> so uh, I, I think just start, like we were saying, just start simple. Just make yourself a, some mints. Um, from a food service point of view. Um, so what we've seen is that around a quarter of people say that they're struggling financially at the moment. The group grew 15% um, in 2023. Have decreased. Um, average price per dish um, has actually seen a drop for, for vegan dishes. Um, in terms of occasions, we see a small drop for lamb. I mean, what's happened in 2023? Where do we think we're going in the future? Um, because people are more wary about spending their money. When they're going out, they want it to be more of an experience. Um, and we've seen this growth in experiential dining as from um, in a logo, that's pretty helpful as well for those people that are um, interested in seeing the more visual picture side of things. So that was quite, <laughs> Charles got a lovely hair to do. Put a pink hat on, it makes it a lot better. It looks lots better with a pink hat on. <laughs> That was quite an interesting insight. Yeah. Didn't it? That was good. She's, yeah. she's good. She no, knows what she's talking no, about. Consumer perspective. Yeah, but she's not just reading numbers. 
she actually understands what she's saying, yeah. which makes a difference to me. Like, she really knows what she's talking about. It's interesting to for someone like that who can actually relate it into an industry instead of just reading out of a whiteboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally I switch off in them situations 100%. Like, I'm gone and I was listening. Yeah. That's when we start our restaurant, though. <laughs> Just are you just in? Burgers. Are you in? Uh, I'll be Restaurant. a taster. Right, okay. Oh, yeah, oh. okay. The wine taster. Oh, no, that's a good idea. Have you considered <laughs> someone for that role yet, or is it open? It's open now, yeah. Right, it's filled. I'm in. I'm it's in. filled. <laughs> it's filled. Anybody else want to join us in that restaurant? Super Hope Brown's in. What are you going to be? Definitely going to be in a burger restaurant. Well, well, loads of burgers. So, yeah. 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 Loads of burgers. Well, we've got an experience with it. So we need to watch burgers. Well, they can see the cow. And eating burgers. That's so wrong on so many levels. <laughs> Sit on a cow eating a cow. We could do it in your new day. Yeah. Oh, oh. Right, so the bit above the robots, I'm thinking restaurant. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Burgers, Burgers and milkshake. Oh, yes. On it. Yeah, because then you can get the American experience of like, you know how America is quite American to have Being in the barn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so Being in the barn. Go. <laughs> Somebody's going to take that. We've got to be a bit of haters here, haven't we? I know, someone's going to nick it. No, trust me, the amount of money that's gone into it, no one's nicking that. Idea. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. So I'm just walking past this and I'm like, that is a hefty silage sheet, but it's actually fair grass. <laughs> ah, we're just going in here now. I'm going to do an interview near the spreader bale. I didn't see this earlier. <laughs> I'll try. So that's the interview all finished. I'm getting you guys on camera now. <laughs> <laughs> so where will this be available then if people want to see this? Um, it will be on Simply Beef and Lamb channels and it will be on Ladies and Beef channels. Yeah. And um, yeah. And, and will you have that out tonight then guys? Yeah. Um, probably not tonight. <laughs> Come on, what's up with you? <laughs> no, I'm all joking. So you'll find that in the next coming weeks, you'll see that on there. As we were doing that um, interview though, I just see this beast. Look at this. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's like a bag lifter or something. That is massive. I'm not going to say what it, people might call it, but um, you can probably let us know in the comments if you keep it clean. Um, look, it bends in the middle. I know it doesn't bend in the middle. I thought it does. but it does. Yeah. I have seen these before quite a cool thing when they yeah uh, when they're working it sort of swings the seat out to the side yeah right mini beast so there's that one there so what i'll do from that is i'll move to um what talks about the feather <clears throat> when i back in the day when i was was in starting in, in butcher's shops this would always go for either a, a diced or again like that to actually open up to expose this this um, silver skin it's called the people call it the feather i wonder whether it's because that feather's out do it the same to get the silver skin removed so this is the so joke follow the natural seams and it will quite literally pull this one here is where it's been been connected to, to the vertebrate sometimes you will get little bits of bone shape you've got more connective um, tissues that sit within here. If you um, and, and some of the chefs like that, if you actually sous vide that for so I sous vide is vacuum. Well, telling chefs that sous vide is do like that. But you know, cooking for a long time. This is beautiful. The actual fat that sits in there, and then you could actually barbecue that up, sous vide it, then barbecue it off. Everybody's moved over here for the free sticks. <laughs> I can imagine. I just thought yeah, I don't really so want knives in the interview, do I? A bit. So I completely missed out all these bits. And I like come looking and I'm like, oh, it must be like a rump and a fillet or something. But it's not, is it? No. That's can you? Yeah. This is exactly the thing. Martin said, so the butcher said that that probably eats even better than a fillet. Right? Yeah. Right. What, and are there all these like cheaper cuts then? Not or are necessarily they... cheaper cuts, but it's making better use of the way. same cuts. So this is obviously part of the rump, but rather than just using the rump and just whack, whack, whack and cutting in steaks, it's actually utilising the different muscles within the rump uh, itself, which is part of three muscles. Add a lot of flavour, lots of things, different salts, different peppers, fresh herbs are absolutely fantastic on the barbecue. My poor brother I've coated all the sides. <laughs> I'm going to pop this straight onto the barbecue. 
pizza. Yes, like I did. Watermelon pizza. pizza. Watermelon pizza. Now it's for this to be fresh watermelon. Red onion. Um, a nice cheese. I've got the nice, cheese? lovely oh. local blue cheese. Oh. Some bread. Oh, okay. Cheese and watermelon? Cheese and watermelon and again. It's going to be the ice cream taste sensation. <laughs> so we make up a. Onions on the watermelon now. For eight to ten minutes until the cheese melts. It's sweet, it's savoury, and delicious. It's there we go. All done. protein. Apple sauce. Probably one of the best Apple sauce. Apple juice. The secret ingredient but no one's allowed to know. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Spray apples. Apple juice in your stuff. They want everything. Everything. Go for it. Yeah. Keeps it moist. Keeps it moist. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's giving you some ideas for barbecue. Don't forget to marinate everything. Use the barbecue rubs. They're fantastic. I don't want to get the barbecue. The apple juice, don't forget, spray it on. It's suddenly moist, gives it a lovely caramelisation. Becca's come in now. Yeah, so everyone's down tasting down. it now. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. Um, yeah. British, yeah. <laughs> but they've got the right product to start with. This is all Canadian, by the way. Really nice. And then once you really yeah. dive, you'll yeah. that fire in there. It's quite nice. We stood near it. So then, uh, it's quite cold. Nice! That is a <laughs> we've, we've got this to eat later as well, you know, when we do a live stream. We've got stream. left behind, so we're all to have it. I've been eyeing it up. He's missed the carnivore. Mm. <laughs> nice. It's good, though. It is good. Mm. Oh, it's oh, well. Yeah, yeah. You two dancing? No. Pedro, Pedro. We just had such a good day. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, the steak. It's so good. It's cold. We're having the dark to keep warm. Well, it is a bit freezing, Chilly. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. We need the round the barbecue to heat everything up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is incoming. Yes. Around the barbecue. There barbecue will be a live stream. You, you might have missed it, or you, I, I don't know when this will upload. Probably yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, With knowing the, the Wi-Fi around here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave it on my box there. Um, I've got to say, there is a mix of mention I need to do, but I've missed. I can't load the website up to find it, so I apologise for that. But there is one person I need to say happy birthday to. And that's oh, my, this one. my mummy. Happy my birthday, mum. Mom. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Debbie. Um, Debbie. Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Debbie! <laughs> anyway, I'm going to end the video now because it's an absolutely mammoth long video and hopefully people have liked it. If they have, what do they need to do if they liked it? <laughs> Not turn Give off. The... <laughs> Don't press the skip through, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and subscribe. <laughs> go to Charlotte Ashley Farms. <laughs> exactly, go to Charlotte Ashley Farms. Go to Becca Farms. Check out the Becca yeah, and Lizzie podcast. Yeah, thanks, Joe, for that vlog. Thanks. Yeah, 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 no yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah. Check out Ashbrook because they do some fantastic Oh, yeah, they hats. do some really great, brightly coloured <laughs> hats. <laughs> and, uh, and that's it. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. This is the police van. If you, ever, if you ever see this one about, it means that you've been watched. <laughs> Crazy, like, isn't it? Yeah, like in The Simpsons when they always park one outside like Moe's Tavern. This is amazing.